Hi everyone and welcome to some questions on reaction rates. This first question is asking us to describe and explain the effect of increasing pressure has on the reaction rate with two marks. So hopefully we know if we're increasing pressure, we're going to increase the rate of reaction. So we've got more molecules, and therefore more in, in per unit volume to then more collisions per second or greater frequency of collisions. Now don't make the mistake that even though that equation is there and it's in equilibrium, people start thinking of pressure all the chatilia and start talking about that. The question has said, what's the effect on the reaction rate? And it put rate in bold. So it's not asking about the position of equilibrium. It's asking about just what happens to the rate. So make sure you read the question carefully. Okay, second question is asking why the rate of reaction increases when the temperature is increased. Now, if you can go through and just see the answer straight away, then that's great. If not, it might be a case of going through and using process of elimination to work out which one it might be. Hopefully we can see from this that the answer would be D, is that the molecules exceeding the activation energy increases. Now, this question, six marks, quite a difficult question when it comes to the calculations. So we have this setup here. We have zinc reacting with hydrochloric acid. We form some hydrogen and we're collecting that gas excess amount of zinc we have apparatus there you have to outline the experiment and explain how the results will be processed graphically show all your calculations so it starts off relatively straightforward with just a very simple method so we measure how much zinc we need measure the volume of acid mix them together and then we're going to measure the gas at set intervals so that's very simple very straightforward now the calculations now it says show all your workings in your calculations. Now, it's wanting you to actually work out how much you need of everything. So how much zinc you need, how much acid you need, and so on. So to start off with, we know we've been told in the question that we form this much of our hydrogen. So we can work out the moles of hydrogen, 72 divided by 24,000. Now, the minimum amount of zinc that we need, we can work it by taking the moles and times up by the mass number of zinc being 65.4. So we need 0.2 grams at least of zinc. Now, if you want to work out the moles of HCl, this is where things can get a little bit tricky. Now, we've written down the equation that we need. Sometimes it's given to you, sometimes it's not. So we've written out the equation, and we can then see that the ratio of HCl to hydrogen is a two to one ratio. So we can take the moles of hydrogen and times up by two, that gives us the moles of hydrochloric acid. Now, we want to work out the concentration of my HCl. So I've just written out moles divided by volume. So if I have a concentration, this is where there's some assumption going on here. If I have a concentration of say 0.1, now, what would the appropriate volume of acid be? Well, what I can do is I can rearrange my equation to give me volume as my concentration divided by my moles. I can take my moles, and I've done a bit of rearrangement there. Instead of dividing by what 0.1 divided by 1,000, I've then flipped that to get my conversion back to centimeters cubed. It'd be 60 centimeter cubed of acid. Now, that seems somewhat reasonable amount of acid to use. They've then also gone on for some assumptions, saying that if concentration was say greater than or equal to 0.3 my volume would be quite low whereas if it was say less than 0.03 it would then be too high and they just put some assumptions in there with that question now those are some quite complicated calculations the method I think people would be fine with working out the moles of hydrogen and the minimum amount of zinc and you can work out your ratio for your HCl after that this assumption of saying, okay, well, if the concentration is this, the volume is this, and then, well, this would be too low and too high, that last bit of the calculation would be quite tricky. That's why I've included this question, is to show you what you can, how you can answer that if you get answered, asked that, anything like that in the future. The final bit, plotting the results, again, this bit's now a bit more straightforward. And then all you need to do is, how you can plot it graphically, well, let's draw a graph, makes sense. Volume against time, you can then work out a tangent, and then work out from there. Doing your calculations as you would do normally, working out 
initial rate and things like that, or a rate at any particular point along your uh, along your curve that you eventually get from your set of results. So I think the first two questions on this were fairly straightforward. I think of six marks here, I think a fair number of pupils will be able to get, say, around three marks or so, but then maybe four, but then there's a couple of those calculation points in there where you've got to assume certain things in there to then get the full amount of marks. But quite a difficult question, this one, so don't be too disheartened if you weren't able to get all six marks. If you did, very well done to you, but hopefully now we can try and make a bit of sense of that if we see a question like this next time. Okay, and that will do us for today on questions on reaction rates. See you next time.